Come on, Link. Yeah, get him. Get him. <laughs> oh, uh? oh, hey, Cod Lol. What's up? I'm just gaming. It's only been an hour, I think. Wait, what is the time? Uh, well, it's been a week since anyone's heard from you. So I came to check to see if you actually left the house at all or died. Also, hey, is it now a bad time to remind you we had a collab booked in today? Wait. Oh. Oh. That was today. Huh. You didn't forget, did you? Okay. Hey, hey, it's Thinkifer. Never mind that gremlin over there. He's, a uh... Yeah. So, uh, Cotlol. How about the interlopers, hey? Uh, interruptions, question mark? Interlopers? The Twilight? You know, the baddie bad dudes. Twilight Princess? Those masked evildoers obsessed with power who, uh, cast Hyrule into darkness. Those guys. Oh, yeah, those guys. Does this have anything to do with what I found on the street five minutes ago? Uh, no. Wait, yes. Actually, yes. Cue the intro, Codlol, because thinkers, it's time for a thought process. The Twilight, a mysterious race banished to the Twilight Realm. We encounter these darkness dwellers within Twilight Princess as both friend and foe. And in one of the most creepiest scenes across Zelda games, we find out they were part of a nefarious group named the Interlopers. The Interlopers were a group or cult obsessed with power and sought dominion over Hyrule. They experimented heavily with dark magic and all kinds of other things in an attempt of pure vanity and hubris to create magic that would surpass or be equivalent to the gods themselves. When their powers grew too great and they threatened the very balance of Hyrule, the goddesses stepped in, ordering the four light spirits, Ordona, Farron, Elden, and Laneru to seal the interlopers and their dark powers away within the Twilight Realm. Now just a bit of a tangential side note. But I would like to put this out there for all of you to think about. The sealing of the interlopers is speculated to predate the Hyrulean Civil War. There's a good chance this happened during the Minish Cap and Four Swords. But we will leave that tangent on the shelf and come back to it later. Maybe. <coughs> anyway. The interlopers wanted to create powers that would rival and or surpass the gods and they pursued this dark path through their many rituals and experiments. Eventually, these experiments would lead to the creation of many different artifacts. One obvious one being the fused shadow and a little less obvious, Majora's Mask. Hey, what if there was a third? The Fear Deity Mask? Yes, that's right, I said it. The Fear's Deity, the powerful swordsman wielding the powers of a god cast over a fearsome avatar of wrath and destruction. Whoa, 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 hold up, the fierce deity? We were gonna talk about Majora's Mask first, remember? They won't understand if you just jump right into that part. <coughs> Yeah, actually, good point. So anyway, the interlopers, obsessed with the gods and surpassing them, created Majora's Mask. But why a mask? Why not some other kind of weapon or artifact? Well, the interlopers were a cult that inevitably led to the birth of the Twilight, a race with masks held deep within the roots of their culture and also the source of their powers. Nearly every Twilight you see has some sort of mask and it's very obvious. These masks held dark, transformative properties about them. Each variant of the Twilight, as shown, has distinctive different masks for each form. Perhaps just like the transformation masks in Majora that give Link a unique form, the interlopers created certain masks of power that would give each Twilight a distinctive combat form. We have seen what Twilight appear to be when they are friendly. Perhaps they just put on masks when they have to fight, but there's a more important question to ask. 
How did they create massive power that allowed Twilight to transform into various other combat forms? Well, turning back to Majora's Mask, we can see that the Happy Mask salesman used a magical instrument, a piano with a magical song, oddly named the Song of Healing, to, in short, exercise the soul of the Deku Butler's son from Link, trapping that soul within a mask and freeing Link from his Deku form. Now, when Link uses the Song of Healing, we know that each time he created a transformation mask, he did so by using a song that can manipulate and change the state of a soul, causing it to change and transform into a mask, thus creating a mask of power. This, thinkers, is how the dark experiments were all carried out long ago by the interlopers with the offering of a soul and the power of music. In an odd and bizarre kind of way, the Happy Mask salesman inadvertently recreated the experiments of the interlopers with Link during the- Wait a minute. Doesn't this mean the Happy Mask salesman was an interloper and not a Sheikah? Ah, uh, well, yeah, okay. That's one thought process too many for this video. I'll link in the top right corner for that one, folks. Anyway, the interlopers wanted to recreate their own version of the gods' powers. As stated earlier, masks were inherently the medium of choice for the interlopers in recreating their own perverted forms of the gods' powers. Now, <clears throat> here's a fair warning. We are effectively entering the Twilight Realm of speculation. See what I did there? Twilight Realm? Get it? Because it's a pun off from the fact we're getting really theoretical? You know what? Never mind. Just listen to this idea for a moment. Turning back to Twilight Princess, we know there is a lineage, a royal bloodline for the Twilight. So, could it be that the Twilight Princess is actually the Twilight Realm's own form of Zelda? Midna herself is quite powerful. It's reasonable to assume there have been others before her carrying perhaps the alternate realms, Soul of Hylia. A link between worlds confirms there is an alternate version of Hyrule, Lorul, and both of them exist directly parallel to one another. Perhaps places like Lorul, Termina and the Twilight Realm are one and the same. It's just that depending on the timeline and upon the state of affairs within history, the worlds or dimensions had different names. Holy Hyrule! Or rather, Low Rule. That means the Downfall Timeline's Lorulian's Princess Hilda is actually the Downfall's Timeline's equivalent of a Twilight Princess! Well, yeah, that's actually a fair point. And there are also timeline differences between the Historia book and the Encyclopedia, but the Historia timeline is considered the most accurate, and no one really cares about the Encyclopedia timeline. But I care! The Hyrule Encyclopedia has a more up-to-date version! It's blue! It's new! But more importantly, it's true! Anyway, where I'm going with this is very simple. The dark experiments of the interlopers always led to one goal, recreating and or surpassing the powers of the gods. This led to possibly one of the interlopers' biggest and darkest experiments. An experiment that would carry out the sacrifice of the first Twilight Princess in exchange for the powers of a god. God, those godly powers weaponized in the form of a mask. But how? Well, it's highly speculatory, but more than likely, it involved the use of musically driven soul magic, in other words, the Song of Healing, used to capture and imprison the soul of the Twilight Realm's mortal incarnation of Hylia, the first Twilight Princess, for eons within the Mosque of Majora, all the while being tortured by the experimentations of the Twilight, bent on their mad desire 
for power, the Twilight manipulated the powers of the Twilight Realm's mortal incarnation of Hylia, even going as far as to experiment with her powers to call forth a chosen hero. But wait, in Majora's Mask, we see Link defeat Majora within it. What really happened there? Well, the short answer is Vati. The long answer goes sort of like this. Vati, in all his omnipotent wisdom, partook in the interloper experiment after the sacrifice of the Twilight Princess was made to create the Mask of Majora and sought to twist it further by placing a shard of his soul within, in sort of a vague attempt to change it and twist his power into something of his own design. Doing this likely changed how the Mask looked forever and likely was one of the more traumatic experiences for the soul of the trapped Twilight Princess within the Mask, causing it to more than likely become extremely fractured in mind and sanity. This explains the erratic behavior of Majora when Link encounters and fights her. Also, aside our suggestion Majora was created from the soul of the first Twilight Princess, Majora is theorized to be female for other reasons as well, such as the rather feminine voice that Majora has, although that's a little too much on the nose. Firstly, look at the mosque itself. Its shape is that of a heart, like the heart containers the statues of Hylia upgrade. More importantly though, is its eye color. The irises of the mosque are green and surrounded by a sallow red orange to indicate a tortured madness of sorts. Funnily enough though, Zelda's eyes are green. Green is a very rare eye color, one not easily passed on, and if you think that coincidence isn't enough, look at the very name of the mosque itself, Majora. Majora is also a fairly feminine sounding name, and if the mosque was really created from the soul of the first princess, perhaps that was the mother of the second princess, Midna. Majora and Midna, their very names both start with the letter M, sound extremely similar, almost rhyming even, and to top that off, both end with the letter A, but if you look Look at how the name Midna is written in Japanese by the developers. The characters read as Mi, Do, and Na. There it is. Majora and Midona. If Majora really was Midna's mother or ancestor, which is probably more likely the case, it would make a tremendous amount of sense given from how the names are derived from one another. One likely argument I can make, or suggest in support of Majora being Midna's mother, is that the Twilight are extremely long-lived. Even though I don't believe it! What's to say that Majora and Midna aren't any dissimilar to the Witch Sisters who formed Twin Rova? They were extremely long-lived for Gerudo and also very powerful. Wait a minute! The Interlopers were a group made of many races, and Twin Rova was very powerful and very old. What well, is she, or they, as in the Witch Sisters, were key members of the Interlopers? Hmm, I don't think we have enough time to answer that question. So, link in the top right corner for that one. Aside that, what do you all think? Is Lorul, Termina, and the Twilight Realm all the same? Is Hilda really a Twilight Princess? Did the Interlopers really sacrifice the first Twilight Princess to create a more twisted and darker version of their own goddess in their pursuit of power? Let me and Cod Lolish know in the comments below. Oh by the way, don't forget we look at the true god of the Twilight in another video. Link is in the top right corner for that one. Go click it right now to get the other half of this dark twisted theory about the interlopers, the Twilight, Vati and more. Thanks again for joining me Cod Lol and and thinkers, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and tell us both what you think in the comments. Also, if you want to support the channel further, you can purchase any of these epic shirts. If you liked any of these designs, well, what are you waiting for? Go get a shirt from teespring.com with the link in the video description below. Alternatively, you can support the creation of my channel's videos by joining on Patreon for a dollar a month, getting you exclusive access to all behind the scenes
Games content, special giveaways, and your tag names in the video credits. Anyway, that's all for now, thinkers. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, but for now, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye